So this is the first video I made. It's a little Don't Starve animation. I'm in Pixar. It looks very terrible. Uh, moving on. Uh, this is terrible. <laughs> this is gonna be so hard for me to do. Uh, this is uh, something about the thief. Uh, this is a uh, very Senior Pelo inspired. Kind of just is like uh, those stock tunes that he made with stock images. I just wanted to animate that, and I thought this was funny, but it really wasn't because I was like two years old. Uh, Isaac versus Loki. This is an animation I made after fighting Loki in the Binding of Isaac for the first time, and I remember hating this boss. Uh, yeah, if you want to you want to know like why the audio sounds like it's being recorded like in a separate room uh, It's because I didn't know how to import raw audio files into my animations so I kind of just put my iPad underneath the TV and just recorded the sound from the TV just very loud This is the I think the first thing I made in flip a clip. It was just me remastering the Isaac versus Loki card gene. You can see it's a lot more bouncy and stuff. It's because I was getting kind of better, but not better at the same time. I was still like struggling. And I did all this with my finger. I don't know what to say. I'm just spe left speechless to how terrible this all looks. I don't know what else to say. I was just very young. I wanted to make cartoons. Uh, it's been my dream to just make cartoons, parody garbage. Uh, th this isn't anything like proper originally yet, but we'll get onto that now. So these cartoons are based off of a really shitty dead meme called Hey Shit Ass. They were, um, they were made to mock Dream around the time because that was when Dream started to get like flack for being a Minecraft YouTuber. So I made these three animations to, um, attempt to get views off of this little trend. Uh, with all the shit that Dream has done now, um, these are even funnier to watch now, technically. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, this is all improvisational. Uh, this video right here, Hey Shit Ass Wanna See Me Speed Bridge, is actually, um, my most viewed video on my channel, but I have it unlisted because I'm a pussy and I don't want to keep these up. And this is probably the best thing I made in Flip a Clip. Um, it is the most expressive, it's the most animated thing. Uh, if you don't, if you want to know why you're not seeing the logo anymore, it's because I screen recorded these because I was made fun of on Newgrounds for putting a flip a clip animation there, and I was gonna make a fourth one, but the meme died and I didn't. So uh, next video. So this little thing here is uh, something I made for Madness Day of uh, 2022. Uh, this is the first cartoon I made in Flash. It's um, Madness Accelerant parody. It's uh, very inspired by Madness Accelerant. I had no idea what to specifically make for Madness Day because I wasn't uh, into writing long stuff yet. Uh, I made this in the span of two days and I uploaded it on Madness Day, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the two backgrounds you see here are actually from the Game Files of Madness Accelerant. Uh, the tricky head angles are inspired from his Accelerant. And the music in this is also from Accelerant, except for that uh, elevator music. It's from the fifth episode of Gene Goldstein's Hyperboy. And Crinkles also saw this animation, and uh, I assumed he liked it. And, uh, yep, this thing sucked. I really regret making this. It was such a waste of time. Um, but hey, it was my first cartoon flash. It's pretty whatever. Uh, this, is, this next video is um, Pico vs. Guppy. Um... I made this to compete in the Newgrounds uh, Spooktacular of 2022. Uh, this cartoon is basically just uh, Pico, Nene, Nene and uh, Darnell go to a cemetery. Pico finds this paper saying, uh, don't put corrupted flash files on the grave. You'll understand this if you're like an NG guy who used to upload SWFs when we didn't convert our stuff to videos. I say this as if I use NG around that time. Uh, so this creature, a lot of people said, oh, I thought this was a giant sperm or whatever. The fuck is that thing? Uh, that is um, Guppy. Guppy is from uh, one of Edmund McMillan's uh, unreleased games called uh, Guppy by the same name. Uh, that rock tune was from 12 Ounce Mouse. This was the ending of the song F Off. Um, Guppy was the something I thought of because Guppy would be a very uh, easy thing to animate just destroying a city. And look, it's the spooky guys from uh, Senor Pelo. 
And that person you just saw get blown up was Trav Sauce, uh, an artist on Twitter. And uh, this Pico Hero design is from a graphic that would load on NG on the playlist of Halloween. Also, that guy in the bookstore is not um, Tom from Ed's World. He, he just roughly looks like him. Uh, this entire scene I actually enjoyed animating just Pico like running back, shooting at him. This pump, the, then they're at the pumpkin patch here, which is, um... I actually don't know why I made it a pumpkin patch, I just wanted to make it roughly loose around, roughly base, loosely, I cannot talk. I wanted to make it loosely based around Halloween. Uh, that guy that Pico just punched was a uh, squid face on Twitter. And then, um, Pico kills him with a lollipop, and look, it's Convict, that's crazy. And then Salad Fingers is playing an outro to another song by Vishal Roney called You're Scaring Me. Uh, that guitar is not being played accurately. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. This is a really odd ending, and I pitched it down so that it would seem scary. I don't know why I ended my Flash videos on black screens. I thought it was just very cool. My next animation is, um, Haddington, which is, uh, my own personal way of saying... Not saying... I wanted Battle Block Theater to sort of end like this, which is a game by the Behemoth. Uh, context behind me making this, uh, I was gonna make this, uh, on my computer last time. But, uh, my hard drive corrupted because I switched off and restarted my computer at the same time. And, uh, so the original file for this animation is Lost Media! <laughs> uh, that guitar is also not being played accurately. I tried to make it look like it was being played accurately. You can see that I'm reusing a lot of fire in this. It's because I'm really lazy to, you know, make new effects. So, I have a flash file that would, I just, like, recycle effects like explosions, lasers, and stuff. I spent an entire day making that, like, blast there that Hattie just did. Uh, how this was received, um, I have no proper idea. I did get a comment saying that, uh, I was someone's favorite artist, which, uh, made me super happy. I love, um, seeing feedback of all kinds, whether you hate my stuff or you love it. I don't know. Uh, this took me half a month to make, uh, in Flash on my new settings for my computer. Uh, it was a lot easier to do because it's in black and white. The backgrounds I made in Cliff Studio Paint in like four seconds. Yeah, I just don't know what to say. This is like my first time doing this kind of commentary stuff. I'll probably never do it again. Uh, I don't know what this aim and break track is that's playing right here. I think I just found it on Newground somewhere. Uh, this here is 100% Kubernetes 18. Uh, Sword Child. Sword Child is, um,. A cartoon that I'm making right now where a child um, finds a sword in the ground and this light comes and tells him that he needs to climb a mountain so that he can ascend into a heavenly place of paradise so that he can meet his family. Uh, as you can see, uh, what just uh, I, what I described just now just happened. Uh, this uh, episode has very terrible audio mixing because I accidentally made my sound effects too loud, so now they're like clipping and like crackling and stuff. This episode is very like early. I made it in a day because there's not a lot of complicated stuff I had to do. Uh, Child was very simple. He His design is just very based off of uh, Eric Black's Marcus Biblo, which is another Newgrounds thing. You can tell by his hair and like his kind of proportions. Uh, I tried making Child as simple as possible and the Source of Light is obviously a play on the key from Marcus Biblo. And you can see that the light talks in reverse dialogue and subtitles are on the screen. Uh, I'm making, I well not making, I'm currently writing a storyboard for episode 3 and I don't want the the light to talk in subtitles specifically. You'll understand when you watch the second episode. Uh, the subtitles are too small, they're too bright, people can't read them, uh, and I instead want, like, I'll do the voice for the, for the light source, but if, like, you could, uh, if you could do, like, a voice that I'm certainly looking for, I'll describe, you can, like, uh, email me, I'll put my email, actually, no, don't email me, uh, message me on Discord if you know what my Discord is somehow, and, uh, this, uh, black demon guy up here is, um, He's evil. He's not the main villain of the story, but, like, he's very important. 
<laughs> All right, this is another big one. My second most popular thing that I've made, in my opinion, and my most popular thing on Newgrounds. Um, this is a reimagining of uh, Pico's Unloaded, which was a spoof of The Matrix made by Jose Ortiz in 2004. Um, this was made for Pico Day on Newgrounds in 2023, a.k.a. this year. And... Um, Again, it's a spoof off of Pico's Unloaded, which is a cartoon where Pico goes into an ice cream shop. Uh, he can't afford ice cream. And as he walks out, he gets surrounded by Uber kids and he has to kill them all. Uh, it's, uh, Pico's Unloaded is one of my favorite Flash animations, so I just thought, what if I kind of rework this to be Pico Day friendly? <laughs> and uh, just add a bunch of Newgrounds characters too. You can see it's not frame by frame, and I didn't reuse like most of the music. The music that was um, playing in the ice cream shop was... Um, what is this? It's the the Jet Rock by, um, I don't know the artist's name, but Mr. Bungle covered it. And you can see I did everything from different angles because, you know, I wanted this to also kind of just feel like, you know, a bit of that Kubernetes in there. Funnily enough, uh, the, the original file for this actually corrupted, and uh, most of what I animated after the, after a few scenes were just gone, so I had to export the last SWF as a video, I mean as a, an FLA through a flash decompiler, and uh, animate from there. Uh, the song that's playing right now is a Russian march song that Mindchamber had up on his website that I just found on the internet somewhere. It, it, I really like wanted there to just still be some of that Mindchamber energy there. There was a lot more complicated af animation after this, but again, uh, I got upset because it corrupted. That's uh, fine. I like this ending here. And then they just dance. Uh, that song playing is um, Outrun by Waterflame. <clears throat> so here's where it gets different. Uh, Pico falls in a really dark area meets Alien Hominid. Uh, I didn't want to animate this in color because I didn't want this to take five years. So you can. I'm not going to list every single reference. I put them in the credits. But uh, all these Newgrounds guys are about to fight um, Piconjo. Uh, Piconjo is a... Um, a parody character uh, made by um, the guy with the same name on NG. Um, the reason he, I call him Piconjo and not Butt Chamber because a lot of people who are fans of Piconjo say that this design from Newgrounds Rumble is Butt Chamber. But um, I didn't want to call him Butt Chamber because that's retarded. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't know what to say. I'm just like overwhelmed that like I won $100 off of this. Yes, I this made fourth place on Pico Day. Um, uh, I don't know. I made this in a month, and nothing, none of it was a, uh, none of it was easy. There was a lot of sketching that had to be done, despite the art looking very um, messy and stuff. It's very inspired off of uh, Mind Chamber, anyway. Uh, all these references, dude. I'm just like surprised at how many characters I was able to add in this. Uh, the music that is playing while Piconjo is finding all these people is. Um, it's a new. It's a, not Newgrounds. I can't pay attention. Uh, it's from Battle Bear Zero. Uh, well, this track in particular is from Battle Bear Zero, which is a mobile game. Uh, the second, the first track is from Battle Bear's Gold, and you can see all these characters just hitting him around and stuff. I, the roster of Newgrounds characters picked in this video were just like Newgrounds characters I'm severely obsessed with and just love, and the audio for, of this is from the Marcus P. Low DVD. And the song playing now is from Guilty Gear, which is a game that um, I really want to play, but I'm not good at it. And uh, very inspired off of, you know, kind of just fighting games. <laughs> uh, this is so stupid to watch. I'm actually glad that I made this because it really shows, it's a really great practice on just animating different kinds of characters, despite them just being like background references. Back there you can see people like Q-Boy, um, Miss Dynamite, Hyperboy. There's Peabot. You can see that Peabot is not really on screen for that long because I hate animating massive characters. And then, uh, this is not really how I wanted it to end, but I feel like I had to add in Friday Night Funkin' somewhere because it is the, um, biggest Newgrounds thing ever. Yeah. And Boyfriend kills him and they get to go back. Very hilarious stuff. And then there's just facial expressions. I got super lazy with the last scene of this because I was just like done with this video.
So uh, you can see Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force on the shop there. And you can really see the mistakes in the animation. And I was just getting lazy. This is a continuation of the Jet Rock and I'm recycling backgrounds and everything. You can definitely tell in my animations when I'm starting to get lazy by like me reusing stuff. And those were a bunch of uh, shit from Albino Black Sheep that's super popular. There is the credits. The song in the credits that's playing is a cover of uh, Money for Nothing by Stratosphere uh, that I just found on the internet. And look at all of these characters. I'm still overwhelmed that like I have to, um, I had to like animate all of these guys. It was very hard. Flash kept crashing. The beginning file corrupted. But hey, I made it, and it was worth it because I, I got fourth place. Funnily enough, about the credits, uh, Alfred Alfer's name is spelt wrong in the credits, and um, I forgot to add in um, the credit for uh, who's this guy now? Um, uh, Dr. Shroud. Okay, <laughs> sorry, it took me so long to remember. So, this animation is, um, I made this for, uh, Vark Skeletor Joel. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Uh, Vark Skeletor is a, he's a Twitch streamer. So, this, uh, audio in the background is from one of his second Ghostbusters album that, uh, he just released recently. Um, it's about, you know, Ghost Johnson vaping. So, since I didn't see anyone making animations from the new album, I thought I'd be, you know, the first one to do it. That's, uh, the grandma from Worms there. He's just vaping. I wanted to make this really look like it was made by someone who is high off their ass. Off of, like, you know, vape. And, like, with everything constantly changing colors, just the background moving and spinning around. Joel counting in reverse. Um, this is very... It took me a long time, but I enjoyed animating this. It was very entertaining. And that little flippy does. I actually really want to make more cartoons that are just like stupid, retarded, um, not meant to be taken seriously bullshit. But um, they take too long despite the fact like they're, uh, despite the fact on how short they are. You can see a little 12 ounce mouse reference on there and expand on. A couple of these references are just from Vark Skeletor himself. And that, um, uh, that breakdancing animation I kind of just uh, got heavily inspired off of Pico. Breakdancing from the sequel of Pico. Pico School. <laughs> uh, I really didn't want to animate someone taking a shit. So it felt very, like, uncomfortable for me to do. I really don't know what to say about most of my animations. I'm fecal funny high. Uh, another thing is, uh, I'd explain all the references, but I'm pretty sure if you've uh, watched a majority of the important Vark Skeletor like stream highlights and other videos, uh, you'd get a lot of the reference. Not a lot, a lot of the references here. Yeah. Uh, this I animated this entire video in the span of um, three weeks uh, or more. It was very. It took a long time. A lot of my animations do just kind of take a long time. I'll take like really long breaks from working on them. This is like, uh, this is so like annoying to kind of just watch. A lot of my friends actually didn't like this one because they thought it was stupid. And uh, yeah, I felt kind of upset that like I could have made something way better. But I really put effort into the end over here when he goes to hell. Um, this hell environment place I really liked making. The devil guy I had to sketch out several times until coming up with a final design. There's Toad telling him that the song never ends. And, uh, this demon guy is very inspired off of, uh, 12 Ounce Mouse as well. 12 Ounce Mouse inspires a lot of my bullshit. Uh, he's based off of the Amalok blue demon from the show. Uh, kind of, well, his face at least. And, uh, he throws him in his mouth. Very cheaply animated, and all this fire stuff was done in um, After Effects. You can see that, like, uh, I I love 12 ounce math, so I put the uh, the acoustic part of F off in this, and then just the explosions. And hey, look, there's Granddad on a stick. And this effect here, I did in um, I did in a uh, Da Vinci Resolve at last minute. I just kind of made the colors dark and inverted. Uh, yeah, that was my Vark Skeletor animation, terribly explained, disgusting. 
All right, um, divorce. This is a super interesting one. I made this in a day. Um, it's not based off of personal experience, even though my parents are divorced. Um, I wanted to make a cartoon where it's just like uh, me voice acting both characters, having like the most realistic conversation about divorce ever. Uh, it's very simply, it's very like simply written. Uh, it's, it's not deep at all. Just me like talking to a mic out of nowhere, just like. Telling if I was a mom, I'd be telling my kid this before I divorced, divorced, <laughs> before I divorced uh, his dad. Uh, surprisingly enough, I got a comment from one of my friends, uh, "Go luck yourself," saying on how like as a person who had to go through like um, divorce-related stuff, and all everything that's happening uh, right now is super accurate. Uh, I can't explain why, but uh, I can definitely tell where he's coming from. In which, like, uh, the type of stuff that the mom is telling his son, the son, like, distracting the entire conversation with the guitar. You can see a little ween boognish there. It's when I became obsessed with. I wrote this whole thing in one night, um, in a call with friends. Uh, we just all wanted, like, all the characters to talk like, um, uh, well, not talk like, but uh, have a really realistic, like, conversation. Uh, very inspired off of um, improvisational stuff from like uh, home movies and Twelve Ounce Mouse. Uh, this entire guitar thing is like uh, truly just based off of me, like currently playing acoustic guitar. And uh, now that I'm learning acoustic guitar, I've become obsessed with the instrument. Uh, and I want to play electric now because it appeals to me more. Uh, if I could say anything right now about the acoustic guitar, uh, never play this instrument, it sucks to play. Uh, that was divorce. I have nothing to say about it. It's very whatever. But I definitely want to make more cartoons like divorce because uh, they're very fun, very funny, not serious. But uh, I can't because I just don't have the time. So here's another uh, very uh, my magnum opus like animation. This is Sword Child Episode 2. Uh, episode 3 is coming out sometime next year, can't promise, but it should. Uh, the intro here is very inspired off of um, Alfred Alfer, which is a cartoon made by Emily Yukis. Uh, you can see the little demon guy flying around there. And look, there's child walking across the bridge. Oh shit, it's my shitty logo that I drew in like no seconds. And uh, the next song is the live version of Mr. Bungle's um, Violenza Domestica. I really love this song. R really want to. You, I really wanted to like find live recordings of certain types of music that really capture the vibe of um, a scene in Sorchel. Because I always want it to be like visually enjoyable. As you can see, uh, the child now has ears, and the light source is a lot like less terribly animated and there's the logo which I will be using until I redesign it and uh, he places his sword in the ground and he's gonna go rest against a rock because he's tired and he wants to sleep but oh no the demon guy decides to pull up out of nowhere and invades his mind and then we take a little zoom in to see what's going on um, the song that's playing here is another Mr. Bungle co song called Incoherence uh, basically what this describes is like a bunch of these invasion guys who invaded this village here. I said burning everything. It's, it's foreshadowing for what happens later. So yep, the child just thought he had a bad dream or whatever. And then there's the light, um, asking him if like, you know, you're good. Because you're kind of just like freaking out. And telling him to not sleep or have, when, when he sleeps to not have nightmares because it will distract him from the mission. So then he mentions that they're going to go to a village so that he can properly rest there. And uh, he follows him, and the dark guy comes back and flies off with them. I don't do fade transitions a lot in Flash because they're very hard to do because they require a lot of layers to have the tween option on them. And then here's uh, the very important part where they come across a graveyard. Oh, hell nah. And they have to cross it to get to the village. So, the light then explains that this graveyard uh, used to be a village, but then everyone, uh, like, died because it was invaded, and did you see the little flash? Uh-oh, it all makes sense now, and now the light's gonna leave him by himself to test his bravery. Poor child, just started his mission and he's already getting ditched.
Uh, now here, this is a scene that I really wanted to just make super ambienty. There's a, I don't know what song is like this very, I don't know what the song is that's like super deep, probably audio I just found online somewhere. And the jaw harp stuff and other sounds you hear are a mix of um, Mr. Bungle's Violenta Domestica and their other song, Panic in Blue. I really like the scene where he just jumps in the puddle and then walks forward very um, detailly. And as you can see, I actually stopped with the watercolor backgrounds and instead just went to the line art stuff. The reason for this is because I made Sword Child at different times of 2023, so I got tired of the entire like background stuff. And another interesting thing about this episode in general is that there is audio delay. Why is that? Um, it's because I made this in one single file in Flash and then export it through separate ones. Uh, the song here is Panic in Blue, and I really wanted this scene to really just, you know, make you feel like, oh damn, something bad is gonna happen now. All these zombies are finna kill him and shit. <laughs> I really liked animating the zombies. Uh, they were originally gonna have like a lot more of a complicated design until I simplified it into ha they into like having a lot more like charm. They do really have like. It's very interesting, Copernicus-esque style to it. This song playing here is The Stroke by Billy Squire, but a distorted cover by Mr. Bungle. Uh, and that little demon goop guy is a parody on Billy Squire himself. And he's just singing The Stroke because I thought this song would be cool to like kill zombies too. And you can see a lot of the animation is getting complicated because, again, it's an action scene made by Copernicus 18. You can always expect good action cartoons from Copernicus 18. I'm plugging my own channel right now. A lot of these angles, I really enjoyed animating all of it. I really enjoyed animating the zombies getting split in half. Another guitar. You will never catch me never putting a, like, a guitar in my animations. And then child gets bitten and you notice, you'll notice that he dropped a sword. And now he's fully surrounded by zombies, and realizes that his sword is missing, he gets dragged into them, and then he's beginning to be pulled apart by them. This scene is inspired from Battle Bears as well, when you die on the last level. There's a cutscene that plays where you're, a guy is getting ripped apart by bears. So, now the light source comes, goes in his ear to help, he goes into his ear to help him, uh, he gets... Um, possessed <laughs> by the light source. I really like the smoke just flying across the ground. And there's the fat laser that comes up and Child's about to he's about to kill everyone. Uh, there's that nice 3D and then he shoots his hands into the ground. Interestingly about this scene, I originally wanted him to just suddenly just pick up his sword and get good at fighting again. But I realized that that would take too long and I'd probably never release the animation. Uh, in a long time as well, because I was getting really tired of animating action stuff. It's really painful to watch this with the audio, audio delay, and I couldn't fix it. Super sad. Oh well. Uh, yep, then the light source just comes out and tells him that uh, he didn't do any of that, uh, the light source did, and that he needs to he needs to get better at fighting stuff because he dropped a sword mid-combat, and that's not good because he probably would have died. Then he gets sad. And tells him that, uh, you can always train. There's like a guy who could train you at the village they're gonna go to in the next episode. Very important. Training guy, very important. Um, about this, uh, song in particular that's playing, I found this on the Ween Archive channel. Uh, I, I don't know if it's made by Ween, but this song is very cool. And that guy is also very important. He'll be important in the fourth episode. And in child in, and with child in general. And uh, you, that's foreshadowing for what's going to happen in possibly either episode 4 or 5. I don't want to spoil too much because that's the end. Now we're moving on to another cartoon, another parody uh, of No XP. Uh, no XP is a series that is currently being created by Gene Goldstein on uh, Newgrounds. Uh, it's about these JRPG characters who um, completed their quest and now they have to live in the real world. Um, I uh, This came from a script that I had in my drawer about um, this kid in class looking at a gaming magazine. And it turned out that like, not turned out, but like, uh, it was like everyone just sees it as porn and it's funny. Um, I wanted to make the no XP characters do this because they live in like a JRPG world. Not JRPG world, but they're JRPG characters. Just uh, 
<clears throat> dicking around, and I'd think it'd be funny if, like, in their world, um, gaming magazines were seen as pornographic magazines. Very funny. That that um that exploding chicken joke was written by my friend. Uh, he wanted a chicken to just be in the microwave and just explode. Really funny. And a lot of the dialogue is just uh, me getting good at comedy, I guess, if you find any of this funny. Uh, if you can hear any of the faint audio in the background, that's from an episode of Lucy, the Daughter of the Devil. I don't know which one, but it's uh, one where they cover a song, and it's funny. Uh, then they're just explaining to Vega Jack, the black guy on the couch, on uh, like, uh, why any... <laughs> Why would anyone want to, like, see women naked? And I thought that joke was very funny. Uh, I can't explain any of this. This is not anything, like, original except for the stuff they're saying. Uh, funnily enough, the creator of um, No XP, Gene Goldstein, saw this animation and he said it was really well made. The voice acting was really good. Uh, the animation had a lot of effort put into it. And uh, he found it super funny. Uh, now I think this is a good time, uh, if you want to see, like, sketches or get the files to s most of these animations, you can, uh, follow, not follow me, but, like, you can subscribe to me on Patreon. Uh, the song that's playing here right now is Red as Satan by Ween. I didn't know a song to end it on, so I just ended the video on that. Uh, I'll put my Patreon in the description if you ever wanted to give me money. Alright, next video. Alright. Uh, this is the last video we're going to talk about. This is, um, a music video I fan-made for, uh, Ween. I, one day I want, I really hope they see it. But, um, it's, uh, it's a music video for their song, Don't Get Too Close to My Fantasy, off of their album, Pure Guava. Um, I was originally gonna make a music video for their song called Marble Tulip Juicy Tree, but the song felt too long and I didn't think I was getting anywhere with the storyboards for it. But, um, you know, one day I'll probably, you know, animate that. The song that's playing in the background here is called Burnt Cena, because I was originally gonna upload this to Newgrounds, but, again, you can't upload anything with copyrighted music to NG, because they're not like that. So, um... I didn't end up uploading this to Newgrounds because I thought that this song didn't really fit the animation, like, um, Don't Get Too Close, because it would be really odd to watch this without the music. Well, um, uh, anyway, this, uh, animation is just about this kid who's, like, in the forest and gets met by a demon, and then they see this white, boognish like creature, and then he chases it, and now he's trying to kill it. Uh, you can see these kids are dead in here, and, uh, they're asleep, and he thinks he's gonna die now. I really uh, liked animating all these characters, very fun, very simple, didn't take a long time. And then all the Boognishes, Boognai, whatever, are dancing in here. I made this animation in uh, Adobe Animate because um, Adobe started to crack down on people who don't pay for Adobe CS5, I assume, and now like my copy doesn't work. I currently have a Adobe CS6 installed after working in... Um, animate in CS4 and not liking either of those programs. CS6 feels like the most uh, usable out of the three. Um, well, anyway, this last scene is just a transition of him trying to chase this boognish creature and stuff. So I think that's all I can say. It, you can obviously tell by the way the boognishes, boogni, or dan- uh, I can't tell what to refer to them as. The boognishes, by the way they dance and run, is very inspired off of uh, Adam Phillips' music video for their song Transdermal Celebration. I will probably make another Ween music video if I ever feel interested. And uh, now that the video is uh, over, I can definitely say thank you for sitting through my really awful uh, <laughs> single recorded one take cringe video of me talking over my videos and explaining really stupid stuff about it. Uh, what I will plug is definitely uh, you should subscribe. I want to get to 1k subscribers so it makes me look cool. And um, I'm currently making a video about Alien Hominid Invasion because I'm very disappointed in the game that got released. I'm very disappointed in the community and I'm um, just I just feel done with Behemoth. Well um, anyway uh, that was my video and uh, I really like this ending. And stuff. If if you know how to get in contact with the uh, the Ween guys, then you can definitely send this uh, video to them. It's my most recent video. Uh, I don't know when I will release my Alien Hominid Invasion video, but I should be I should be done with it by like next week or week or ah that's allowed. Uh, anyway, uh, that was my uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
uh, I guess. Sorry about any audio crackle. I'm way too lazy to fix all the audio garbage. Oh well, uh, thanks for watching. I love all of you who are subscribed. Thank you for supporting me for the past <laughs> four years. Follow me on Newgrounds. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on anything. Follow me right now. Follow me right now.